Hindu Kush Himalayan region, if you see, has been an asset, global asset. And in our uh, work in the last five years, we have been able to really come with the Hindu Kush Himalayan monitoring and assessment, some of the key issues that we see in this region. One very important is this is a global asset. We need to recognize this asset. And this global asset is actually facing lots of stresses that needs to be also kept in mind. So when we look at the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, world's almost half of humanity is dependent on this region. 240 million people live in the mountains, 1.9 billion people live in the downstreams. And the food that is produced in the uh, downstream caters to three to four billion people. So you can imagine how important uh, this region is. And in this context, the uh, high map, which uh, was mentioned yesterday also and today, I can tell you there are many global assets and resources. It's a natural capital for the entire world. Like we have, apart from two poles, we have highest glaciers here. Uh, out of 36, four global biodiversity hotspots are here. I map one of the findings that we get, this region is still unexplored. Almost 35 species per year ha is being discovered in last 10 years, 350 biodiversity species. So you can see lots of investment can go, which can give a lot of returns in the long term. Now coming to the business, this region, if you look uh, 20 years ago, there was limited access. Now, access is there anywhere. If you go to, from east to west, there is much better access. So there is better business opportunities uh, that is uh, coming here. Now, the irony is, the paradox is that in spite of so much of resources, why people are still poor? Why people are still at a very difficult, vulnerable uh, stage, we need to really think into this. I would like to give three practical examples related to the resources that we have in the mountains and how that was not, uh, or how there are opportunities to really take lessons from the past and build for future. When I see this region, I think there are two big economies, China and India, already there when we think of business. But there are opportunities if there are niche products to go beyond uh, from the region to the world. So that, that those are the opportunities that we see. Let me give you an example. Big challenge that we face is that in the mountain uh, areas, it's very difficult to retain youth. So how we can retain youth in the mountains? That's a challenge. So I can give you one example of Sikkim. Uh, young two brothers who have actually got educated from UK, who are engineers, masters, they have gone back. And with the help of Isimod, when they got trained in uh, Godavari, now they have established almost 250 farmers uh, consortium and a, a, a industry that is catering to the syrup of this ground apple. And that is now marketed in India and abroad. So you can see how the youth who are highly educated, who are educated in UK are going back to the mountains and villages and doing on their own. Very little government support. It's more enterprising and linking with the business. I think this is one good example, positive example, and we should think how we can retain people uh, actually in the mountains. Another example, again, I would like to give from the Eastern Himalayan region is we have many products in the mountains. Right from yak, uh, uh, livestock related cheese, there are many products. One very important product, which is large cardamom, which is a spice. Uh, what has been there uh, um, uh, as a crop, the, if you see, is uh, that it's very, very unique. It's a really a mountain crop. It's a low volume, high value, non perishable, less lever intensive, uh, with a very high environmental protection uh, perspective because it's agroforestry. You don't have to actually plant this for 20 years. Once it is there, you manage it. Such a wonderful mountain specific, mountain uh, suitable crop. But what has happened? This is very specific to Darjeeling Sikkim, uh, uh, Southern Bhutan, and uh, Eastern Nepal. And in this context, the biggest challenge in terms of business, such a wonderful crop, always there has been informal market. The middlemen have been taking and exploiting from Eastern Nepal or the uh, product goes to Amritsar and it goes to Lahore in uh, uh, Pakistan and then it goes to Middle East and elsewhere. So there is a very informal. So in business, we have to bring formal setup. We have to provide instruments to really see that how mountain 
specific crops, which are niche crops that can be really uh, promoted and taken further. So there are many opportunities. Again here, what we can see is how mountain youth, how mountain women can get benefit. This crop is unique in a sense that mountain women, less labor incentives, huh? it's uh, highly uh, uh, high value crop. So it provides all the opportunities related to health or other education that mountain people can have. So the link uh, here is also global. Right from a village in the mountain, it can get uh, linked with uh, the states, uh, the countries, and the region, as you, I have said, from, India, from Nepal or uh, from India to Pakistan and from Pakistan to elsewhere. So this is the type of uh, thinking we have to see for almost all those niche crops that we have. Now, nuts in the Western uh, Himalayan region is another wonderful opportunity. Uh, we, you can see that value chain. So similarly, I think, I have to uh, give another good example. What has been the constraints, although there has been good intentions, uh, and where we can improve? Another good example for me is Darjeeling tea, the brand. If I go to Austria and ask, I get a, a tea which is leveled, which flush, which garden, uh, all those are uh, mentioned. And I pay about 11 euro for a cup of tea there, whereas, uh, what is happening to the mountain communities? Where is the connection? See, in Darjeeling tea, we have all the emotions, but ultimately what happens is that the people who have invested business, they take all the benefits. The people in the mountains, people of Darjeeling, they are more like leverers. Where is the connect? How we can connect community with more benefits to the local people in such products? From here, if you just move towards Nepal, Nepal tea is now with individuals. More, the farmers can have their own tea and produce. That is the model that we have to see, how we can bring the benefits uh, ultimately to the people. Then it becomes sustainable. Then there is an uh, equitable uh, business proposition, which will be uh, in a longer term viable. So in this context, there are many examples that we can see in this uh, region. So what I uh, very strongly feel is that when we look into the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, there are many opportunities. Tourism is another opportunity, but not at the cost of the environment, not at the cost of what we can really uh, contribute, not only to the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, but uh, outside. One big connect that I would like to bring here uh, when we talk about mountains is Himalaya to ocean. H2O is the water which links. So there is a lot of business in this H2O. You do agriculture because of water. You have all these mineral waters which is on the table. It is also coming from the mountains. So there is a link. But the problem is that all these business is not going to last long if all these bottles are going to the sea, to the oceans. So we need to see how we harness the mountain resources in a clean environment and try to see that how this can sustain not only the mountains, not only the downstream countries like Bangladesh, India, or uh, downstreams of China, but also globally. The oceans, sea, they are linked. What we dump, what we put uh, there is going to impact. So let's our business be more environment friendly and uh, the, uh, also business that connects people more strongly in terms of benefit. So uh, from Isimo point of view, finally, I would like to say that we are very, happy. We are very uh, much uh, interested to link with Himalayan Conscientious, and we have been there, Lawrence, from the day one, if I remember correctly, <laughs> when we were conceptualizing the whole uh, process. Isimod is committed to provide the evidences, researches to the dialogue that is uh, happening, and that can actually be more meaningful, and that can actually be used uh, very much in policy uh, changes, policy processes uh, that follows the dialogue. Thank you very much, and I'm very glad that uh, ISIMOD is really integrated in this summit 2018. Thank you very much.